Hello, Milford, and welcome to another edition of Healthy Futures. The show has been produced in partnership with the Healthy Futures Initiative of Milford, uh, and today we have one of those members with us. Her name is Lisa Vassell, and uh, the topic that we're going to touch on today is food allergies. Now, Lisa, it's a broad term, food allergies. Lately, it's been popping up everywhere. Uh, is it just a fad, or is it a legit thing we should all be concerned about? Uh, it is not a fad. Um, it is a huge problem and quite often highly under-recognized and highly under-diagnosed. I, I do feel as though people try. I, I have nothing against uh, traditional medicine or the way that we're testing. I just think that some of our testing sometimes misses uh, what's going on because we do have pretty good testing for allergy but we don't have the greatest testing for intolerance. And I think a lot of us know about the word lactose intolerance, right? Mm -hmm. And nobody ever, for years and years, I mean, that's been the case since I was a kid, nobody ever blinked at lactose intolerance. It was just something that somebody had. And then when we were younger, people didn't have it, but now they have a pill that you can take the pill and still have the dairy um, and then get away with it, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But nobody ever blinked at that. Now we're starting to realize that it's not just lactose that people are intolerant to, it's many foods that people are intolerant mm -hmm. to. And that may not come out in a way of digestion, which is most how people um, have the symptom of lactose intolerance is digestion. Other people might have uh, eczema, migraines, um, thyroid problems, trouble losing weight. I have a lot of people that have um, brain fog and uh, clients and um, and it's a, real, it's a real problem because of what the testing is in traditional medicine tends to be more of an allergy type testing and it's fairly hard to test for someone who has an intolerance. It's a little bit different testing. Uh, I, I read somewhere that uh, the United States is really the only lactose intolerant uh, country. The rest of the world actually drinks a lot of raw milk, but since we homogenize and pasteurize, is that part of the problem over here? I think um, that that what you the example you gave is is true in that some of how we manufacture food and produce food to the masses that we do and hurry it and add this and add that and change this and change that. Some of those are the homogenized and pasteurized. Some of it may be some of the genetically modified, the way that we're sort of changing the way the plants are grown. And, um, and that would be maybe taking a cell of one plant and putting it into another plant so that it grows better. Um, and this isn't something I'm making up. It's, on, it's all over the place. You can look it up. Uh, corn is almost 100% um, a GMO plant. So we have a lot of corn in our food. Um, and um, if you've ever seen the movie King Corn, uh, it's a pretty fun movie where the two college kids from Boston um, do a, a great um, movie or a whole documentary on they had a hair follicle tested and it was 80 to 90 percent corn. Wow, and they that thought, is weird. And they thought, well, I don't eat that much corn, but the more that they realized how much corn is in everything, including things like high fructose corn syrup and, mm -hmm. um, and, the, and the cattle eat corn. And so all of these things are making our bodies a little bit different now. And our immune system is trying to catch up to it and trying our digestive tract is trying to catch up to it and break it all down. And so with that, some of the things that are going in are completely unrecognized because it's added into some of the foods that we're eating and then the body sort of just gets on edge and I like to make the example of a puppy if you got a puppy and you loved it and hugged it and kissed it and nurtured it and just really this puppy was your world and everything was this puppy the puppy is going to be a wonderful puppy it's not going to bite the next person that walks in but if you abuse it and neglect it and hit it and do things that aren't nice to the puppy by about a year old anything that walks near that puppy even if it's you or me that loves puppies is going to get bit um, and so that's sort of what's happening. The immune system is saying, I don't recognize that food, I'm going to bite it. And I've seen that food before, I'm going to bite it, instead of what really is a true allergy. Hmm. Interesting. Um, well, that kind of the corn kind of ties in with gluten. You've seen a lot of gluten allergies now. <laughs> um, so what's the, you know, and also I meant to ask you, what's the difference between an allergy uh, and intolerance? So an allergy is an actual immune, re, immune they're both immune responses, um, but an allergy is actually something that causes IgG antibodies to be changed. Um, specifically, you could have an IgG, 
and this is just the way the immune system works, or IgE. And people have heard of nut allergy specifically, mm -hmm. where if, or shellfish, where they have one of those things and they get what they call anaphylaxis, where their tongue swells and they can't breathe. Mm -hmm. um, and um, that can happen with any food across the board, but the biggest ones are eggs, nuts, and uh, shellfish for, the, for that particular type of reaction. That's a completely different reaction than what we're talking about with um, other foods. Specific to gluten, which you mentioned, um, gluten allergy is, um, an actual allergy to gluten is that the antibodies are building in the body against that protein of food. All foods are broken down into amino acids, and those proteins are fought, and then the body actually builds an immune level to it. Um, and that specific lab test or, or immune test is called a tissue transglutamase, a TTG. Those people are celiac sprue. Those people are allergic to gluten. They put mm -hmm. it in, the body reacts, a whole bunch of things can go down with that. Um, specifically, duodenal cancer, infertility, osteoporosis, I could go on, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, however, with an intolerance to gluten, you won't have those antibody changes in the blood, but you will have, you may have other things like bloating, digestive issues with the irritable bowel, headaches, um, heartburn, brain fog, attention deficit, those kind of things. Hmm. Um, is some of this uh, food allergy, um, is, it, is, it an over, is part of it an overreaction? So let's take the peanut allergy thing in schools especially, you know, it's like illegal now to bring a peanut into a school. Uh, is that an overreaction or is that really something we need to fight against? Um, I think you make a good point. I think that um, specific to the people who have IgE, the one that I told you about with the anaphylaxic, I think that's where that comes from. Uh, people that have intolerance to gluten or intolerance to other grains or intolerance to other foods, I know specifically citrus foods tend to be uh, really high for people. Um, dairy is another intolerance, those kind of things. But for the IgG, IgE response and the anaphylaxis, I think that that's appropriate uh, to have a separation. Not bringing into the school, I don't know about that. When they're younger, I can see that. When they're older, mm -hmm. they should be able to know better. Um, but I, I do think that it's a scary, scary thing. Uh, recently, um, having it in the news recently in Hoppington, a young girl passed away uh, right before Christmas because of an anaphylaxis. So it's terrible and horrible, and I do think that it should be taken seriously. What I find with gluten intolerance or other types of intolerances are people like, well, you're only going to get a belly ache, so it's really not an allergy. So for me, um, that's not the case. I actually am a celiac, and so that's that's not true. So um, maybe I won't stop breathing, which is thank God. Um, but it certainly is a huge issue for me. There's many, many, many things that happen, and it takes about two weeks for me to recover. So I do think that it it does need to be taken a little bit more seriously when someone says they have an intolerance. But specific to how serious the allergy versus intolerance is, um, to answer your question. And these tests that you were talking about uh, that you can get to find out if you're, you just have an allergy or an intolerance, is this something that uh, people should uh, make a point to get these tests every year? How does it work? Is it part of your physical? No, it's definitely not part of your physical. Most, uh, most people will get those done um, through a specialist. So if it's um, eczema, they may do some, some testing for allergies. If it's uh, GI complaints, you know, just gastrointestinal, belly aches, whatever it might be, that might be a, it might be a GI specialist that does that. Uh, might be a primary care that does it as well. Like I said, many of those, however, don't always come out positive because of the fact that they're excuse me, a little bit lower on the um, threshold for, or higher on the threshold for coming out positive. Um, but there are tests, um, and certainly on my website there's information about testing for that, and um, it's not done routinely, and almost always the ones that are outside of traditional testing are not done um, through insurance. All right, that's great. We're going to take a break right now to uh, we're going to check in with Leanne from ABT here in Milford. Uh, she's going to show us some quick and easy exercise uh, tips that we can do at home to stay healthy and happy. And we'll be right back. Hi, this is Leanne again, and I'm back with more exercises that you can do at home. Quick and easy exercises this is exercise number four. This is an abdominal crunch, so we're going to work our core. So what's gonna happen is Lisa is gonna put her hands behind her head, um, out nice and wide, keeping her elbows nice and wide. 
She wants to press her low back into the ground and make sure there's not an arch. So a little pelvic tilt position that's gonna protect the spine, protect the lower back. She's gonna breathe out on the way up, breathe in on the way down. She's gonna raise her upper body by using her core or her abdomen and not by pulling on her neck. So she's gonna come up as high as she can and then drop down. Just a nice easy crunch, come up, good. And then look up to the ceiling as you pull up. There you go. So the first couple she did, she pulled her chin down towards her chest, which is putting more strain on her neck. The second version, she looks up towards the ceiling, she's pressing her low back in and she's doing more, working more of her core. That's the basic version. Harder version, hands go across the chest. Now we're gonna do a full sit up, okay? Coming up, touching your elbows to our knees and squeezing. And if you need to lock your feet underneath, you can lock your feet underneath a couch at home. And she's gonna come up again, touch her elbows to her knees and all the way down. And then all the way up, breathe out and breathe in on the way down. Harder version, arms go up over her head Okay, her goal is to try to keep her elbows or her arms in line with her ears. This is a hard version. This is a very advanced version, and a lot of people end up using momentum to get up. We're gonna to try to get her to use her arms, not use her arms, and just use her core to pull up. That's actually not bad, and then down nice and slow, and then try to use your core. Good, she uses her arms a little bit. If she can get, as your core gets stronger, you'll be able to keep your arms locked up over your head. And that is exercise four. Hi, we're back with exercise number two, which is gonna be a wall sit. What's gonna happen is you're gonna find a wall at your home or in your garage, wherever you're at. Lisa's gonna put her back against the wall and then she's gonna squat down into a 90 degree angle. She wants to make sure her feet are away from the wall and her knees aren't jetting over her toes. So this is what it looks like. So you're gonna squat down, back against the wall. She's gonna squat, she's gonna hold it. Knee comes directly straight over her heel. They're not forward over the toes and she's at 90 degrees. Okay, this is a perfect position right here. Okay, now stand back up. Some of the mistakes that you find is that um, you're, you won't go, you won't sit down low enough, your knees jet too far over your toes. So those are some things, so I'll have Lisa squat down, keep your feet close to the wall and squat. And this isn't a good position, her knees are jetting over her toes, it puts too much pressure, pressure on her patellar tendon. Your goal is to really just work the quads and the hamstrings as you go. Um, for the amount of time you want to go, this is not like your jumping jacks earlier where you're going for repetitions. This one you're going for time. Your goal is to start out for 30 seconds and then increase your time as your legs get stronger. You can go 45 second increments, one minute time. And if you can get up to a minute and a half, that's awesome. Attention superheroes! Evil villains are trying to get kids to drink sugar-sweet beverages like sports drinks, soda, and juice. Oh no! Let's go, superheroes! <laughs> Soon I have every kid in America full of sugar! <laughs> drink! 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 Hi, welcome back to Healthy Futures. Our topic today is food allergies. Uh, it's not just a fad, according to Lisa Vassell. These are things we should be concerned about. So Lisa, um, what are we gonna look out for? How do we know if we have a food allergy? What are some uh, symptoms or reactions to food that we should be aware of? And then not self-diagnose ourselves, but mm -hmm. you know, go to the doctor and say, hey, this happened after I ate this. Is it this or is it that? Uh, what are the steps? 
Um, the, the excellent question. So first um, and foremost is things that are bothering you on a daily basis almost always have a root cause. So a, a migraine, heartburn, you know how sometimes you eat and in, in, I hear a lot of people say that they'll eat and then they're just exhausted sure, after they yeah. eat? That's a huge sign that there's an intolerance. And it could be what, it could be not specific to gluten that we've discussed, but it could be anything. I had one person who had word finding problems and she was forgetting things in the middle of her presentation. She was a big presenter. Um, we did some food allergy testing and she was allergic to onions, tomatoes, uh, citrus, and corn. Wow, tomatoes. Tomatoes. What is in tomatoes that could be harmful? Whenever you break it down, it, it, there's a protein. Every food becomes an amino acid in the body. Hmm. And so, you know, it can be anything kind of strange, weird. She took them out and she did great. So um, others, other symptoms might be, you know, big digestive things. Anything digestive, I always say there's got to be something going on with what they're eating. Not necessarily that they're intolerant, but maybe how they're eating it, how they're preparing it. Some people just can't tolerate, you know, I have some people will say I'm allergic to apples, but it's not really the apples, it's the peel. Once we take the peel off, they can eat apples. Hmm. And so um, certainly how, how are they preparing food? Another might be, uh, we've mentioned brain fog, we've mentioned um, weight gain is a big one. People that are really kind of doing a lot of things right, but they're just stuck. And we'll start looking at food intolerances and finding that there are some things that they could take out. And when they do, they start just dropping weight. And it's an inflammatory thing more than anything else. In your line of work, what is the most obscure food allergy that you've come across? Um, things like, um, I had someone the other day that had fennel. fennel. I mean, I think that's funny because we don't really get fennel in our yeah. food very much. So the body looking for that as something that's foreign is weird to me. And what was in fennel that the bo their body didn't like? I don't know. It, was, it came up on a testing that I did. Mm -hmm. I do a little, uh, some non-traditional uh, food intolerance testing, and, um, and it came up. She had about 10 other things, but that one in particular came up. I thought that was kind of an interesting. And vanilla. She had two different ones that were interesting. So it's not always the, uh, you know, the top three or four allergies out there. It could be something really that you wouldn't think about at all. Obscure, and correct. And you, you really have to take the time to narrow that down. That could be a lot of work. It could be a lot of work, which for my clients, a lot of them will say, well, what do you want to start with? And I'll do dairy and gluten right off the bat. Mm -hmm. um, and this is, uh, you know, I'm not saying that everybody has to do that. I don't want anyone to think that. But for the people that are coming to me, they have reasons to come to me. Um, most of the time, it's because they're frustrated that they haven't gotten very far with all the things that they've tried, whether it be their own stuff, trying this doctor, doing allergy testing, and they haven't gotten very far, so then they come to me. And um, most of the time I'll say, well, just try for the next two weeks, dairy and gluten, and see how you do. And, and I would say about 90% of my clients feel better, and then we have to decide which one is it. Uh, or if they don't get much better, then we have to start investigating other things. Now, why, why are some people able to break down uh, gluten and dairy better than other people? Are their bodies just in better shape, or is it a genetic thing? What's going on there on the other side? There are some genetics to that for sure. Uh, actually, we don't have the enzymes to break down either one. Okay. Uh, in, our, in our human body, we don't have the enzymes to break down uh, gluten because if you think of wheat and barley and rye, which is what the gluten grains are, those are when cows eat them, they mm -hmm. have that second stomach mm -hmm. um, that helps to ruminate it, whereas we don't have that, obviously. And we don't have the enzyme to break down dairy is either. And there's a lot more people that have adapted to gluten than they have to dairy, um, and because it's in everything. And so we've just sort of bypassed it. But if you look at the um, over-the-counter medications that we have uh, grown in your lifetime, in my lifetime, and it's th 3,000th the amount of things that were in a pharmacy before that you could just go get on your own. Mm. Specific to even just digestion, right? You have the one for the constipation, the one for the diarrhea, the one for the heartburn, the one for the bloating, the one for the gas. So, I mean, it's, it's insane how many things that we treat ourselves with thinking that we're combating um, symptoms that really are trying to, our body's red flag saying, you know, there's something not right. Hmm. Yeah, we're trying to help ourselves after the fact when really we could combat that initially right. by eating the right foods. Um, so, you, now you know you have a food allergy uh, what is, or an intolerance. What's a day in the life of a person like that? Is it tough? Is it ruining your life knowing that you can't have gluten? You know, how do you work around it? For me, it's a joy because it actually forces me to go out and say, what else do I, can I eat instead? Um, and a lot of the processed food is off, off the table. So it, I, I think that's a gift for anyone. Uh, and it would be nice, if, <laughs> you know, it's a nice way to say, oh, you can't do that. Um, but really, truly, I think that um, 
It's starting uh, with, with taking out the food that you're allergic to or intolerant to. So if it's gluten, then you just go, okay, well, I can never have a dairy. I mean, I'm sorry, can never have a donut or a bagel or those kind of things again. Um, and instead, just starting with, with whole foods, so vegetables and, and, and um, proteins, meats, fish that isn't marinated. Um, because that's, that's the one thing with the, the allergies, that you really have to be sort of a, a little bit of a Sherlock Holmes and really looking at ingredients and really being able to um, not rely on people saying, oh, no, there's nothing in that that has that, because you will, you will pay for it after. Um, for something like dairy, um, it, it's in a lot of foods. You know, um, same thing with soy is actually harder. If you look at the ingredients list, soy is probably harder than dairy and gluten. Um, so if you have someone that has those kind of allergies. And so basically you just have to prepare. You have to make sure you know where you're going and try to make sure you have snacks with you at all times. <laughs> and I'm going to throw this out there because I see it happen a lot. If you have a, a, a food allergy or uh, an intolerance, how do you keep yourself from becoming that you know, flag-waving, rah-rah-rah, gluten-free person, you know, shows up to the party and has to tell everyone that they're gluten-free and you should do it too. How do you do it uh, not so invasively? How do you, how do, you do it in a, a, a helpful way rather than a, uh, a combative way or, you know, you don't want to be that guy that the everyone's like, oh, yeah, shows up to the Super Bowl par party with, you know, the not-so-fun food and then kind of makes everyone else feel bad. How do you, how do you get around that? Um, I think it depends on personality. Um, I would say that um, some people might say that I do a lot of talking about that, but I think it's because of my line of work, seeing so many people that do are so sick. Uh, but for me, people wouldn't even, I've worked at the hospital uh, per diem for years, and just the other day someone said, hey, I had no idea that you didn't eat gluten. So I think it, I think it depends on how you prepare and, and, and how much you let food run your life. For me, it's just a, a way for me to stay healthy and for me to have energy. It's not, I don't care about missing the cake. I don't care about missing the donut because if you're going to feel like crap after, it's not worth it. So I think really looking at food as a way of energy, as a food instead of a way of comfort. Sure, and I think some people might be surprised uh, when they cut certain foods out of their life, how they kind of lose that need for that mm -hmm. food. Like if you cut sugars out, um, I know I've tried it myself, and after a while you just, you have no uh, want for a candy bar. You have no bar. want, and then yeah. when you taste it, it's insanely too sweet. Yeah. Uh, but yes, um, I think that there are a lot of people that are like that, just like the, you know anyone with an ex-smoker. You know, you get the people that are so anti this, anti that. But I think it's all about um, being looking at food as more than not more than just a way to give build, build um, immunity and nutrients and those kind of things. Um, I, I mean, I have three kids that are gluten-free, and they're not always happy about that. Mm -hmm. So I completely understand sure. with the whole, we bring the, the not uh, fun foods. But I tend to try to make it fun. So strawberries dipped in dark chocolate. I mean, you can't, no, one, no one doesn't love that. So there's ways to get around um, not having the fun food. Sure, and we actually uh, did a Healthy Futures episode about food alternatives, um, especially if you have a family. So go back into our archives on uh, Milford TV's YouTube page. My Milford TV is our channel. Uh, and you can see that, uh, that episode with Josette. Uh, and we talked about uh, food alternatives. And, um, you know, it's not always super expensive to buy the better foods. You can always find a way around it. And, um, but I will say the one thing before you, I'm sorry to mm -hmm. cut you off. The one the mistake that many new um, food allergy people do is that they exchange it. So if I can't have dairy milk, I'll have uh, soy milk. Or if I can't have um, gluten bagel, I'll have a, a gluten-free bagel. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times that gets you into more trouble because it's not always the healthier choice. Mm. Yeah, there's some, yeah, you know, they may have like, you know, a lot of the gluten-free stuff, they use rice flour instead, right? Yeah, which is highly glycemic. Yeah, so you want to look out for that. Yep. All right. Well, I think we learned a lot today. I know I did. So thank you very much, Lisa. And that'll do it for today's episode of Healthy Futures. We'll see you again next time. Thanks.